The evil, unholy, plate-wearing warrior of death, who commands the dead, spreads pestilence and disease, debilitates their enemies, and cleaves down multiple foes in melee range. If you ever wanted a necromancer class in WoW, well this is as close as you can get. Death Knights are a powerful new type of class. They're a hero class, starting at level 55 and being able to deal physical damage, shadow damage, and frost. They have self-enhancing spells like anti-magic shell, horn of winter, bone shield, and so many more that make them a complete terror to both spellcasters and other plate-wearing classes alike. Death Knights are also deathly powerful in both PvE and PvP, with the ability to be a top-tier tank as blood specialization, which mainly focuses on increasing their survivability through lots and lots of self-healing talents, as well as damage mitigation talents. Now, the Unholy Tree focuses more on improving your diseases and summons, allowing you to permanently control troll an undead ghoul, improve your army of the dead, and even summon an undead gargoyle to rain terror from above. Frost specialization, on the other hand, introduces dual wielding talents, the ability to hold two one-handers and do very well with that, and powerful damage dealing talents like Howling Blast, which is an incredible AoE ability. In PvP, there are plenty of strong arena teams Death Knights can join. 3v3 teams like TSG, which is Paladin Warrior Death Knight, have been known to steamroll other teams, especially when both Warrior and Death Knight have Brin Troll, the overpowered, lifesteal, two-handed axe that on equip grants instant gladiator. Death Knights also have very powerful effects to bring to PvE, debuffs such as Ebon Plague, which grants 13% increased magic damage taken to afflicted targets, and powerful raid-wide buffs like improved Icy Talons, which grants 20% increased melee haste. Death Knights also can equip the new legendary in Wrath of the Lich King called Shadowmorn. That's right, the relative of Frostmorn, the Lich King's blade. One unique trait about Death Knights is that when you are done doing your starting series of quests, you'll get a full set of rares, which looks amazing. And the gear is so good that once you head to Outland and start leveling, it doesn't get replaced for some time, so it's quite good. When it comes to using abilities, Death Knights operate off of two resource systems. Runic Power, which is like Rage, generated through attacks and slowly decaying outside of combat, and it is used for abilities like Frost Strike, Summon Gargoyle, or Death Coil. Now the other resource is six runes. Two Blood Runes, two Unholy Runes, and two Frost Runes. After using a rune, they go on cooldown and will come back automatically after some time. Now, abilities can sometimes require multiple runes to be used, so knowing which abilities to use when can be important so that you aren't stuck not able to use the abilities you want. There are many abilities that grant you flexibility with your runes, like Blood Tap which converts a blood rune into a death rune. Now these death runes can be used as blood, frost, or unholy runes. Lots of flexibility there. Throughout each of the three talent trees, there are also talents, which cause your runes to convert to death runes. Talents like reaping in the unholy tree, which causes your blood strike and pestilence to convert the blood rune used to cast that ability into a death rune when it's done refreshing. Or blood of the north, which does the exact same thing, but is found in the frost tree. The blood tree one is actually a little different though, and it's called death rune mastery, which causes death strike or obliterate to cause your next frost and unholy runes to become death runes when they refresh. These talents can all be very helpful in making your playstyle a little bit more flexible. Now speaking of playstyle, death knights are actually very similar to warlocks in that they have damage over time so that they want to keep up on their target at all times. But instead of curses or magic effects, these dots are diseases and are even more important, arguably, than warlock dots because they empower the death knight strikes greatly. For example, scourge strike will do an additional 12% of the physical damage done from the attack as additional shadow damage for each of your diseases on your target. Now, Death Knights have a total of three diseases, Blood Plague, Frost Fever, and if you're unholy, Crypt Fever, which morphs into Ebon Plague if you spec into it. Now, this means an extra 36% extra damage as shadow damage from your Scourge Strike if all three of your diseases are on your target. Now, many Death Knights will tell you it's not even worth using your strikes if your target doesn't have diseases on. 
So keep that in mind when it comes to play style that you'll have to always keep an eye on those diseases if you want to be effective. But there are many abilities that help manage diseases, like pestilence, which spreads your diseases to all nearby targets. You can even get glyph of disease, which causes your pestilence ability to refresh the duration of your diseases to their maximum duration on your target, which essentially frees up both an unholy rune and a frost rune in your rotation. Now the diseases themselves are actually really interesting and are more than just to make your strikes stronger. Frost Fever, for example, is a frost damage over time disease, as well as a damage mitigation debuff in the form of reducing the target's melee and ranged attack speed. This disease is caused by Icy Touch, which is an incredibly powerful ranged ability causing instant frost damage and is a huge threat generator for Death Knight tanks when used in frost presence. Blood Plague, on the other hand, is just a shadow damage over time disease, so on the surface, it might just look like one to make your strike stronger. But with the tier 9 4 piece bonus, Blood Plague can crit, which paired with Pestilence and Wandering Plague, which gives a chance for your diseases to deal 100% additional damage to all enemies within 8 yards, this seemingly simple dot can cause an absurd amount of damage. And the last disease, Crypt Fever, which is caused by your other diseases, increases the disease damage taken by the target by 30%, and when morphed into Ebon Plague, increases magic damage taken by the target by 13%. Now when playing Unholy, it's important to always leave a Blood Rune or Blood Tap ready to use for Pestilence to refresh your diseases with that Glyph of Disease. You don't want to have to waste a Frost Rune and an Unholy Rune to refresh Blood Plague and Frost Fever when it can be done with one Blood Rune. This is just one example of smart rune management as a Death Knight. Death Knights also have a nice convenience spell called Death Gate, which brings them back to Ebon Hold, which is kind of the Death Knight area similar to Moonglade, on a one minute cooldown. This spell can act like another Hearthstone, getting you back to town, very similar to the Druid's Teleport Moonglade spell. Death Knights are also somewhat similar to Warriors with their presences. There's Blood Presence, Frost Presence, and Unholy Presence. Each one one has their uses depending on the situation. Frost Presence is the tanking presence, granting increased threat generation, increased stamina, and armor contribution, and even a straight up reduced damage taken. Blood Presence grants straight 15% increased damage and a 4% heal on all damage the Death Knight deals, clearly a DPS presence. And last, Unholy Presence grants 15% increased attack and move speed and reduces the global cooldown by half a second, which is pretty nice for spamming abilities. As you can guess, Unholy Holy is also a DPS presence. But don't be fooled. Even if Frost Presence is the tanking presence, the specialization for tanking is actually Blood, assuming the patch of classic Wrath of the Lich King will be patch 3.3.5. Now, if you remember way back in the day when Wrath was first released, Blood was completely broken. It was the damage dealing specialization that all Death Knights went, and in patch 3.3.5, after many beatings from the good old nerf bat, it can still be a damage spec, but it's not as good as it used to be, and it is almost always used by serious tanks. Now, when it comes to what is the best race for Death Knight, this decision can make your blood boil. This question is frequently asked because, unlike other classes, any race can be a Death Knight in Wrath of the Lich King. So you can feel as though maybe you have chains of ice paralyzing you from making a choice. Orcs for the Horde are a great choice for PvE. They've got five expertise with axes. Blood Fury doesn't give you a healing debuff anymore and will now grant both attack power and spell damage. Command has been revamped now work for all pets. All pets means your ghoul, all your army of the dead minions, as well as your gargoyle, which is very powerful. If you're thinking about PvP for the Horde, the Blood Elf Silence Interrupt can be a game changer. It's definitely a close race considering Will of the Forsaken for Undead. Troll Berserking is actually buffed, as well as a new racial called Da Voodoo Shuffle, which reduces movement slows duration by 15%. Overall though, I think Blood Elf is probably the best where an interrupt can win you the duel, the arena, the battleground, and so on. Now for the Alliance, Drenai I think are an incredible choice for PvE. The 1% spell and melee hit is now combined into a single racial that all Drenai get. It's going to be just for your party, so you're going to want at least 5 Drenai for your raid. Uh, so it's going to be very sought after and useful. Human Sword and Mace specialization has actually been nerfed in Wrath of the Lich King. Dwarves now have Mace specialization 
option, so you could consider them as well. But when it comes to PvP, humans are hands down the best PvP race in Wrath of the Lich King, regardless of what class you're interested in, because of a new racial talent or racial ability called Every Man for Himself. This has been added, granting a baseline free PvP trinket for all humans. What this does essentially is it frees up both trinket slots for better options, so all serious PvPers will likely go human due to how broken every man for himself is. While on the topic for PvP, Death Knights are certainly one of the best classes for peeling, basically peeling an enemy off their target. With Death Grip, Death Knights can force an enemy to where they are currently standing, which if you're a PvP player, you know how powerful that can be, especially against a melee damage dealer. The Dalaran Sewers, the new arena, lends itself to this type of playstyle with upper and lower platforms, and even Blade's Edge Arena has this same bridge and ground level setup. Death Grip can also be used as an additional interrupt, which is very useful when trying to get a kill or stop a powerful spell from being cast. The Death Knight Ghoul also has Gnaw, which is a melee range 3 second stun. Ghouls also have Leap, so they can basically charge over their target very quickly. This can be extremely powerful too, allowing the ghoul to leap and then gnaw, interrupting a critical heal. Strangulate is also a baseline ability for all death knights, which is a 5 second silence on a 2 minute cooldown. Follow this up by commanding your ghoul to explode for massive AoE shadow damage, and death knights have all the tools in their kit to be a competitive PvPer. Now it doesn't just end with stuns and silences though. Death Knights have one of the most notorious PvP snare abilities in the game, Desecration. A huge 50% move speed slow in an AoE lasting 20 seconds every time the Death Knight uses Plague Strike. This snare alone enables Death Knights to constantly sit on their target, unable for their enemies to get away. And if they somehow do, Death Grip is an incredible gap closer. Now when it comes to defensive cooldowns, Death Knights are armed to the teeth. Anti-Magic Shell absorbs 75% of spell damage, up to 50% of the Death Knight's health, prevents the application of harmful magic effects like Polymorph, and gives the Death Knight runic power from the damage they would have taken for 5 seconds from spells. This is just another powerful PvP ability that will surely cause spellcasters to break their keyboards with rage. Death Knights also have an ability called Icebound Fortitude. This ability is another reason why Death Knights were so broken on release. It had a very short cooldown and it also just so happens to make them immune to stuns in addition to granting a nearly 50% damage reduction for 12 seconds. This powerful defensive cooldown now has a 2 minute cooldown as of patch 3.3.5 which is much more fair considering how powerful it is. Now if you spec frost you can use unbreakable armor. This grants you 25% increased armor and 20% increased strength which is a powerful offensive cooldown in addition to defensive for frost DPS and of course that 25% armor does not hurt when you're taking physical damage. Now another really great PvP talent found in the Frost talent tree is Lichborn. This turns you into an undead, making you immune to charm, fear, and sleep for 10 seconds. It's basically like a talentable will of the Forsaken that doesn't remove the effect, just grants you immunity. However, paladins can use turn undead on you, which will make you run around in fear and priests can use shackle undead on you, basically stunning you in place, since you are undead technically. So having a handy macro to take it off when you need can be pretty important in PvP. Now Frost Death Knights are different from the other specializations because they can dual wield quite effectively with two one-handers. Talents like Nerves of Cold Steel increases your hit chance by 3%, and Offhand Damage, which is a must. Threat of Thessarian causes your strikes like Obliterate to also deal damage with your offhand weapon. This is huge. These talents are what make Frost DPS really start to pump, in addition to must-have talents like Annihilation, which makes Obliterate no longer consume your diseases on the target, and the notorious Killing Machine talent, which gives your melee attacks a chance to make your next Icy Touch, Howling Blast, or Frost Strike a guaranteed critical strike. Frost has a lot of good talents, which make it a top-tier build, 
right alongside Unholy. Now the Blood Talent Tree also has some really fun abilities with Hysteria, increasing physical damage by 20%, but losing 1% of max health per second. Reminds me a lot of Unholy Frenzy from Warcraft 3. There's also Dancing Rune Weapon, which is iconic for the Blood Tree. You summon a second Dancing Rune Weapon that does the same attacks as the Death Knight, but at 50% reduced damage. Overall, each specialization is incredibly powerful for different reasons. You can bet a lot of people will want to create a Death Knight Wrath of the Lich King, but because of their unique resources of runic power and runes, along with disease management, they aren't the easiest class to play correctly. So if you're a pro at Death Knight, you'll definitely stand out. That's it for this video. If you liked it, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.